<laughs> We're good. Oh, we got a four stick coming in. Yep. We do. So we'll give him a minute. Okay, you got enough. Be up here. Go find something to do. I feel like a pirate with a parrot on my shoulder. <laughs> no, no, no. What's that commercial where she's got the coffee cup and she's doing one of these all the time with the cup in front so it, it hides the kid's face? <laughs> <laughs> I could try it. Here we go. Ready? There. Yeah, there you go. That? yeah. see? Now you just move as he moves. <laughs> all right. Mommy's going to be here pretty soon. You got to go watch for mommy. All right. No, 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 no. Get down. Sorry, guys. He's leaving any minute now. It's okay. All right. So Charlie's still connecting. So why don't we just get started? Um, and Peter, you sent the minutes out from the November meeting, right? I did. Yes. So do we have a motion to approve the minutes? No, no. There's a correction on 4B. 4B. It wasn't me who attended. So I don't know who attended, but it wasn't me. Okay. Was it Carol uh, Carol Hall? Did you? I'm attend? on there. I'm on there anyway. I'm on. I'm just on top of you. No, no, not 4B. Were you the one who uh, attended one of the oh, free 4B. training sessions? Training sessions for. Just refresh our memory. It was EV for the charging station. Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't. I go was to at one, one of them. I, I was at one of them. I thought it was Katie that was talking about it. Yeah, I went to one of them. Okay. We have a motion to approve the minutes as corrected. So moved. Second. No. Stop it. Carol, do you have another correction? No. Okay. So we have a motion from Katie. Will you second to Carol? Yep. Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Okay. Um, old business. Uh, just a quick update, Peter, on the visitor map and kiosk. So the, the grant application is due next week. I have a meeting Thursday afternoon with um, Trinity and with the Great Meadow Conservation Trust to um, finalize their commitments towards the project. There is a match. Uh, required. I think we as a commission had previously agreed, if necessary, to throw um, some funding towards the match if we can't meet the uh, match guidelines. So uh, the purpose of the meeting is just to nail down uh, how much of a match uh, we can expect from those organizations before I submit uh, the application. Uh, quickly, they indicate they make a decision in about a month. So sometime in um, March, we would start uh, working on the details. I've reached out to David Wolfram, who did the Heritage Walk kiosks, and he is available uh, to help with the graphic layout. Uh, I do have some pricing, so we should be in good shape uh, for the grant uh, application. Okay. Um, and do we have any idea of how much they're willing to kick in? Uh, they had previously indicated, so um, I just need to nail that down. Um, they were they were talking um, a couple of thousand each, which gets us very oh. close okay. to the to the match that's required. So, um, but if if need be, uh, we'll fall back uh, on uh, on the commission to to fill the gap if there is any. I'm hoping that there won't be any. Right. Okay. All right. Any questions? Okay. One. Uh, I have a question. Yeah. If uh, there's a new business, um, when when do we have to have all the uh, businesses submitted for the? Yeah, I'm going to wait as as long as I can in case anybody uh, comes in. But I think uh, I've all, I've I've reached out to a sign company, and that and what we will do is a um, more affordable uh, vinyl um, product um, that can slide in to the kiosk so that we can we can change it uh every year if need be so mm -hmm. we anticipate the nature of businesses changing and we will have to update that every year so we'll just do it in a a more affordable 
a way. It'll be less quality, but nevertheless, um, uh, it is it is what it, it's going to have to be that way in order for us to update it. Because I can't. Um, I'm asking because there is a new nail salon next to Village, and um, right. I know she's interested in being involved in the. Uh, okay. I'll, um, if you have that information and you could send it to me or her contact, that would that would okay. be helpful. Okay, yep. I will do that. Yep. Okay, thank you. By the way, I'm I'm counting as present. What'd you say, Charlie? The county is present. Yeah. I don't know if anybody took a roll call. I'm late, but I'm there. No, we knew you were connecting. We just started while you were connecting. So yeah, we've got you down. I still don't know who okay. 860-989-3650 is. Oh, Charlie Ford? Yeah, that's me. Yeah, sorry, Charlie. God, I have a memory like a sieve. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, Peter, any update on the charging station, the EV charging station? At one point, we had um, talked about um, applying for capital um, improvement um, funds Um this year, the capital improvement budget is extremely uh, competitive, so I, I was not I was not able to submit that. Uh, we had also talked about doing a, um, you know, a, a sustainable CT grant with some right. local crowd funding kind of thing. So I think we're going to have to uh, revert to that uh, option. Um, I I don't have experience doing that, so I think we're going to have to find somebody who um, is. Um, enthusiastic about the EV station. Um, Betty Standish had originally uh, been the advocate. Uh, so maybe uh, we can reach out to her and, and, and sit down and discuss how that sustainable CT funding works and see if we, we can get her to reach out to the um, EV community or others who might want to contribute towards the cost of that. I do have uh, a a price quote, so I do have a number that we can use, um, and I think it's a I think it's a 50 50. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to remember now the sustainable CT grant requirement. Yeah, I'm trying to remember too. It's been a while. But what was the quote, Peter? Just refresh our memories. I, I think it was fourteen thousand, yeah. but that did not include uh, the installation. We talked right. about having the town uh, electrician, um, you know, cover some of those costs. So okay. we probably have to spend some time you know, nailing the details of that down a little bit. Um, does it make sense to bring this up to at the stakeholders meeting if we're talking about doing a crowdfunding? Since everyone will benefit from that uh, in Old Weathersfield having a charging station? Yes. Okay. Judy, I'm muted. Um, Chris, uh, yeah. there was an article, and Peter, there was an article, every, everybody, in the New York Times the other day about a community that was did, making a decision about having advertising for their EV station. So that that's always a possibility to find out, right? You know, if there's larger companies that would like to um, have advertising on their on the kiosk or whatever. They're actually doing that in Manchester. Um, I was just reading about that in the current this week um, where the parkade was. They're putting in EV charging stations there and they are going to have um, a monitor that will run an ad. I don't think it's audio. I think it's just visual and it changes every however many, you know, 15 seconds or something, it changes to a new ad. So it's a free, it's free for charging because the money from the advertising pays for the use of the EV. Mm -hmm. So um, I know they're doing that in Manchester. I don't know if that's something that would get through the historic commission to allow something like that in, I mean, it's not gonna be right out on the street, but you know how it goes. So, um, but we could maybe try to see if we can get any information on that. Now they're putting in several. I don't know if this company would be interested in just doing one, or maybe if it's not gonna cost us anything, then maybe we, do more than one, but two. Yeah. So, yeah, I was, Katie, I was do you know was that the town of Manchester? I think I think the article in the current was about them having to change their zoning. Um, let me see if I can find it. I'll I'll try to look for it. Um, well, I mean, I can search the current in the archives and just see yeah. if I can find it. 
I'm pretty sure I saw it on the current and not online. In my travels, I've seen that uh, advertising on those stations in a number of other communities. And were they unobtrusive? I mean, would it be something that would be a problem for us? No, they had some, they must have had some control over it. So it was not unobtrusive at all. As a matter of fact, some of it was fairly attractive. Okay. But it was not a video. It was not a video, though. Kate. Right. It was uh, just like just a, a, an ad. Right. Like static ads. Right. Okay. Um, so something to look into. Is anybody interested in working on it? I can do some research on it. Thanks, Kate. Yep. All right. <coughs> and I'll see if Betty might be interested. Because yeah, I think they mentioned the name of the company in the article that is putting them in. So that would be something that we could follow up on. Right. That would be great. Okay. All right. Uh, Heritage Commission membership and appointments. Now, Peter, you reached out to Richard Roberts. I did. Is he town council? He is the uh, Republican town committee chairman. Oh, okay. So I went uh, right to the source. Um, I, as we've discussed before, we've had several conversations about getting the appointments made and they have not uh, as of yet uh, been made. So I figured strategically we would maybe go right to the source because the process involves the uh, town committees making those appointments. So um, he's happy to help based on the email I sent him. We just have to send him um, the recommendations and they will um, do whatever they do to vet the folks uh, and then ultimately get it on a upcoming council meeting. Um, I do have uh, compliments of Carol Bruce, uh, the email where um, I think we made an effort to make the uh, appropriate uh, appointments or at least a list of who, it, and let me just, I'll just go through it and then we can maybe discuss. And uh, that way, if we can um, work this out tonight, I can pass that on to him tomorrow and at least um, get that in the in the system here. So um, one the first one is the uh, executive director of the historical society uh, or designee. And we had Amy and with Jill as the um, designee if need be. Um, executive director of the Webb Dean Stevens Museum. Uh, we had the new new executive director with uh, Katie as the uh, designee. Uh, we had one member from the old Wethersfield uh, Shopkeepers Association. And originally, I think we had Joe Pascal, but I think Melinda Robido. Robido. You're cut now, Peter. How about now? Can you hear me now? Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so we you had, had Joe and then Melinda. Uh, Melinda, Melinda Robido as the, uh, she actually, I spoke with her and she was interested in, in attending. So we would probably just make her okay. the shopkeeper rep. Um, we need um, a chamber of commerce rep. And I think uh, Julie had previously um, expressed an interest in yep. uh, do, in doing that. Uh, I do not have a, a resident. Uh, we, have, we just need one resident of Wethersfield. It's not specific to old Wethersfield. So I don't know if there's you have somebody- to make me on. that if you want me to stay on because I don't fit any of the other categories, I don't think. Okay. Um, one member of the uh, EDIC and I had Judy Keene uh, in that slot. Yep. Um, one representative of the Silas Dean Highway business community. I did not, we did not have a name there. We talked, Carol, do you remember who we talked about for that? It was- um, we talked about Cove Deli and whether or not Kate, uh, not Casey, Stacy, Kelsey. Kelsey right. would be willing to do that only on the, uh, if they would only come when there were events that might possibly impact on them because it was too much to ask someone like them to come every, every month because this is their busy time because they have those meals uh, from four o'clock to six o'clock, right. five days a week. Maybe things will change after the pandemic and things will loosen up for everyone. Okay. Uh, we needed one resident from the old Wethersfield Historic District. Uh, 
Actually, I, actually, I think that was a yeah, uh, one resident from the uh, old Weathersfield Historic District Commission. I think that was. I'm sorry, I'm it's missing the word commission here, but I think we had to have a commission member oh. from HDC. I don't even know who's on the commission. Okay. Is um, uh, Doug, uh, Dan Bucknam still on it? I don't know. I I don't staff that commission, so I'm. I'm a little bit disconnected from that. What I can do is I, I'll ask uh, Kim, who's their staff person, maybe at their next meeting and see if we got a volunteer. Billy Logan was on at one time. Yeah, she's, she's, she's not, not on, on that anymore. I believe Doug Orlean right. is on it. Okay. Uh, I think Jennifer Wolf is on it. They both are. Yep, they are. Okay. Well, rather than appoint somebody if they if they're not interested, let's let me do that. We can always get the first wave of appointments made, and then we can follow up if there's right. some vacancies. Um, one representative from the business community, not retail. Oh, not retail. Carolyn, did we? we I'm trying to remember, Carol, if you had any suggestions or did not for that one. I thought that's where the cove was going. That's not true. Cove would be retail. Oh, the liquor business, is that still retail? All right. What what businesses would that be then? Think about it. What categories? Probably insurance, like insurance, chiropractor, company, lawyer, uh, doctor's office, office, lawyer. Telstrom tool. A bank. A bank. Did we have a chiropractor on one of our recent meets? Yeah, he was with Joe, the shopkeepers. Joe from the shopkeepers is a chiropractor, right? That's probably who you're thinking about. Okay. Is that where we initially had Chris slotted? You did, but I don't yeah, have a business that, I think in that's town. where we had that's where we had you slotted though. So right. right. All right. The category again is not retail. Not retail and or an attorney, public. maybe. Yeah, someone from the Deb. Do you know anyone on the chamber who might have an interest in uh, tourism yeah. and history? Yeah, I was uh, going through all that in my mind. So, um, mm -hmm. chiropractor would be Chris Lavoy. I can certainly ask him if he's interested. Yeah, if you want, if you got somebody who's interested, that's really the most important thing. Um, okay. let and and let, let us know. All right. Okay. Um, there is also a different slot for a resident of uh, Old Weathersfield. Right. So that would be maybe Carol. Judy, we have you for the EDIC slot. So um, maybe that's Carol Carol Hall. I don't live in Old Weathersfield. Oh, I thought you did, sorry. You're Griswoldville, right? Pardon me? Right. Aren't you Griswoldville? Yeah. Yeah. Prom yeah, up rough from Griswold Road. Is that? Oh Weathersfield? I don't... No, probably mm, I not. I don't think so. And we've got Carol. I think we could maybe stretch Carol Hall is awfully close to the to old Weathersfield. Carol Bruce? How about okay, I'm Carol sorry, Bruce? Carol Bruce. Sorry, I'm getting my Carols confused. <laughs> you should live in this neighborhood where we have three of them with, within 22 houses. We have three Carols. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's put Carol Bruce in there and see what happens. And can we make Carol Hall just a, an alternate? Do we have alternates? Did they give us alternates? No, of course That's not. What I was afraid of, no. Although I strongly suggested that. Yes. Ask if you can have someone from Griswoldville as a historic district within Wethersfield. I like that. Yeah, it's pretty specific to old Weathersfield historic district. So mm. uh, maybe Matthew would uh, have some leniency there. Well, I think they'd have to go back and change, um, oh. okay. change the uh, ordinance that they they changed without. Um, what about Captain Morgan? If we can't find Ooh. anybody else. Oh, he, he could be the business community person. Yeah, I was just going to say a business. That's, is that considered retail or no? No, I wouldn't. No, I don't think so. No, he teaches boating. Okay. About a member of the Lenoche family. That's true. No, be Tony, Larissa. 
Oh, yeah, can I, I, can, I can ask Larissa. It's better to get Tony. Yeah. And the parents are pretty busy, so uh, that might not work. Um, okay, we got some names. Um, and then, um, well, we talked about the historic district, so we're gonna have to do that. And then they have that, that the silly represent, representation from town government, so. It's you. I guess it's me, so. Um, I, and I really, why they put you on as a member of the commission as opposed to staffing it, I have no idea. Right. It makes no sense. Right. No other commission is, is structured that way. No. We might want to go back and ask them to change this up yep. again. Put yeah. it all back the way it was, maybe. Well, that might <laughs> be too was, much. That might I be know. too much to ask, but we can at least tweak it a little bit and improve right. it. But maybe let's just get the appointments first and then you know get everything updated and then we can always go back and talk about that. At the very least, Peter, they should not have you be a member, they should have you be the staff person for it. So when you put in the list, say, and for some reason, they have me listed as a member, which makes no sense. Right. So they should be able to approve that at the same time. I would think so. Okay. okay. So Peter, do you need us to reach out to any of these people that we talked about? Uh, no, I think I'll do that. That way I, I can keep the list, you know, complete. And um, even if we don't hear back, I will have them make a certain number of appointments if they can at least to get that get that done okay all right sounds good um i'm not even gonna i'm gonna skip over the next one because we haven't done anything with it and you've working on other stuff so um brochure distribution you got a um kind of pitch from ctm so yes, it's that time of year. Again, we are, we have 16,000 of the fall and winter rack cards still available. We have no cards for uh, the spring and summer. So um, first order of business would be to review the spring and summer card and determine how many um, we want to print. Um, so it's, I think been a little while since we updated that um, that rack card. Obviously, it's um, strange times and um, none of the typical events are being held. So the rack card does include, you know, I mean, the general events that we normally have. So is the spring we, event. Yeah, it's the, you know, the Heritage Weekend and, mm -hmm. you know, the, all of those things. So um, I'm not saying we shouldn't have them on there, um, but just some, something to something to think about or you know once again maybe we don't print as many and distribute as many until things get back yeah. online again but nevertheless we have to at least review it and um, decide how many we want to print um, are we are we tied into actually doing it I mean do we by contract with them I mean do we even is it even worth spending the money to do it? Mm -hmm. That's what I wanted to discuss if we wanted to take some time off. We did a reduced, um, once we were into the pandemic, we did a, re a reduced uh, a contract with them last year. Um, so we can certainly, you know, reduce our scope or, you know, take some time off. I, it, it's really up to you guys as to what you, what you think we should be, we should be doing. Um, Just think of paying them. Go ahead, Judy. I'm just thinking paying money to put rack cards in racks that no one's going to be using. And I mean, you know, it just doesn't seem reasonable. Save it, save it. And we could do a better job in the fall when hopefully life is going to be more normal. Maybe. Is there a big difference? It's a two parter. One is we need the, do we need the rack cards? Cause we don't have any is the first. And then the second is, do we even bother putting any in or put a very limited number in because we don't need them? We have 16,000 really of fall and winter. For the okay. fall, right. Is there a huge difference between the two cards? I mean, I know the events are different, but um, people would probably understand that there's no events coming up in the spring and take the fall card be better to get rid of the 16,000 that we have. You're muted. Katie. 
that's because there's someone singing in the background. Um, <laughs> do they do? Are there dates for the events on those rack cards, or does it just say the? Okay, so it just just lists the general events right. um, uh, without any time frames because they've changed at different times. <laughs> okay, so that's maybe not a bad idea, Judy, because it's probably going to be fall before anyone's even thinking about traveling. Exactly. And, uh, yep. you know, if it's generalized enough, I would say just le go with the 16,000 we have. How do the rest of you feel? That sounds good. Are there, I is agree with Judy. enough? I, I think so. Yeah, normally we do 25 um, each of the two seasons, so 50 during the course of a year. So right. given- So 16 is plenty. And if things if things get better, we can always do a an updated print. The print doesn't take very long, um, and we could get an ad an, an additional supply out there for the fall right. if need be. And Peter, is that sixteen thousand what they have in stock, and not what's already out in the cards in the racks? Uh, it's what they have in stock. Okay. Wow. So what we have to remember is that they're already out there in all the racks, mm -hmm. um, and so. I mean, I'm trying to remember when I was down in Mystic, that would have been September. And we were in the rack cart at the hotel I was at. So, and there was a, and there were two huge batches in the rack cart. So all the racks are already stocked and they have another 16,000 sitting in the shelf. So I think we're fine. Uh, last, last year, they did not do the visitor's map. They canceled that. Yep. Uh, because of what was going on. They haven't yet made that decision. So um, when we get closer to the season, we can discuss it again and decide what we want to what we want to do. Well, isn't that usually when our contract renews anyways? Uh, we, we usually, well, it depends on the year. We've started early sometimes, but normally it's a July 1. Right. Last year was a July 1 start. We, we cut the season down. Yep. So um, yes, we have um, we have some time to make those decisions. The map decision um, was made after we had agreed to do it. They just had decided to cancel it. So um, I would imagine we might be in a similar situation this year too, because yep. they make that decision earlier on because they've got to print that well in advance. Right. I suggest that we um, wait until we hear from them whether the map is going to be started up again because it doesn't help to have the cards if there's no map mm -hmm. and just go with what we have right now. Yeah. Do we need a motion for that? That was my motion. That, oh, that was your motion. I'll second it. How's that? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we have a motion to not print a spring and summer card um, to let CTM just use what's currently in stock. And we will relook at it later on in the spring. And any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, um, brochure, Peter. Um, do you wanna talk about the one that you sent me, sent to me and Mark, or you wanna leave that for the moment? Sure, let's talk, let's talk about that. Um, yeah. Many, uh, uh, so CTM does other things, obviously for other communities. One of the things that they did uh, last year, even with the pandemic, is they did a series of um, specific um, brochures list, listing um, uh, certain sectors of the market. For example, they did a brochure called the Connecticut Taco uh, Trail. They listed all of the Mexican <clears throat> restaurants that um, offer uh, ta tacos throughout the, uh, actually it was through the central through the Central Connecticut Tourism Region, which is Hartford County and the bit of the shoreline, uh, apparently those um, uh, flew off of the um, the racks. People really thought that was great. They did. Uh, they also did a rest a restaurant, another restaurant one. They did a beer a brewery trail. Mm -hmm. So they they did a couple of themed brochures and they were very um, successful. So uh, I sent an email to Chris and to our EDIC chair, um, and we we maybe need to include the chamber, but maybe we should be doing, you know, brochures that uh, promote specific sectors of our 
um, business community, such as a restaurant brochure and maybe some others that we could think of. So um, we're just beginning to talk about that. Um, we do have a very good updated list. Um, we did we did that for the sustainable CT certification and the website is pretty up to date too. So it wouldn't be a big effort to pull all that information together for a brochure. We would just need to hire somebody to design it and to print it. Um, we haven't even started looking into the cost yet, but we wanted to float the idea uh, and get get some thoughts um, from everybody. And it's also because of the pandemic, it's even more important, you know, that we figure out ways to help promote our local businesses. Um, so this would be a local piece, I would I would imagine. I don't know that we would, um, you know, put it put it out in the rack cards with CTM, but you know, just to make sure all of our residents and maybe in the surrounding towns. Right. Uh, are, are aware of every of all the restaurants that are out there. We also just today thought about maybe we need to include, um, since the restaurants are regulated by the the health district, which is a regional health district. Maybe we should think about doing this on a regional basis. Yep. Through the health district, and nice so idea. so we're still really batting the ideas around. But we'd also obviously want the chamber uh, to be involved as well. So it could be a a, a multi organizational project. Um, so that was the idea, and we're just sort of bringing it up for conversation. Yep. So, so Andrew, just to build on that, I think it makes sense to, because I thought about the health district as well, that we include Newington and Rocky Hill at the very least. Mm -hmm. I know Berlin is the other community, but um, it makes more sense, and it would also help distribute the cost a little bit. Um, and doesn't CTM they print our rack cards for us. Wouldn't they print the brochure if we came up with the design? I think they might even help us with the design as yeah. well as the printing. They have a, a separate company that does the printing. So I think um, they may have done the design for the, um, the tourism district. They all district. look pretty similar. Yes, they have a very similar feel. So if, if we were to do something, obviously we would want them to have a similar feel uh, as well, so wow. they did. They also did one that was based on family fun, that kind of thing too. Now, now that I now that I think about it, they did. I think a series of six different ones. So they had diners, barbecue trail, taco trail, family fun. I forget what the other one was. Yeah, I see. maybe it was the brewery. How does um, that get funded? Um, I think sorry, the, the tourism district, the tourism district paid for it. Um, through their own means. I don't know how we, we would have to figure out how we fund it. So, um, I mean, both the EDIC and the Tourism Commission have some, I mean, this this year in particular, you have not spent- Any money. Um, on your usual. And if we're not gonna spend money on the, the brochure service, um, right. there should be plenty of, um, of funding to, to do this. Um, Where would these brochures go? Uh, that would be, what we would have to figure out. We do have, um, you know, we could supply those pretty affordable tabletop um, plexiglass rack cards for mm -hmm. sure holders with the supply to each business so that they can put it out in a prominent uh, location. So, um, and I think we would also have it electronically available on the websites, you know, for people to download. So if, it well. was, if it was for restaurants, you would, uh, Put the the brochures at the restaurants that are in the brochure. I would, sure. I would cer certainly think so. That would be definitely the place to start. And then whoever else retailers or whoever else wants them. Julie, are they still doing like that uh, the welcome wagon kind of thing where they're giving out bags with things in it for people that move into town? That would be a Deb question. I'll look at the sorry. Oh, that's I thought okay. No, it's actually an EDIC question, to oh. the best of my knowledge. And okay. Here, 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 the over to Judy. <laughs> no, the, the, an, the answer is no. Um, okay. we, we solicited businesses to provide us with um, all the things to put in the bags, and we literally got no response. Um, so people are not doing that uh, anymore. Okay. I think they're focusing in on their social media and that kind mm -hmm. of thing. So um, unfortunately, um, we may not be we may not be doing that again. That's too bad. We could at the very to... least put them at the realtor offices. Yeah, mm -hmm. Peter, how many uh, bags do you have left? I'm not sh quite sure. I think we probably still have a, a hundred or so. Okay, I'm going to suggest that once the calendar comes out, that we put the calendar in a bag and give it to 
you know, realtors, let's use them. Personally, and, I'd love some. I, I've yeah. always wondered how to get my hands on some. So and if we have a brochure ready, we can have, put those in there as well. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. yeah, I think the time, the timing of the calendars versus the brochure are, are going to be significantly off. So that probably won't work uh, well together, but, right. but maybe, let's then, do maybe the, next year, next year. Let's do the calendars yeah. and get the bags out, uh, you know, to new homeowners. Yeah. So how do the rest of you feel about doing a brochure that either talks about fun things to do or restaurants in the area? Does it make sense to pursue it? I like the idea. I do too. I think it would yeah. be helpful to all of our businesses in town. Yeah. Yep. And, and I like the idea of doing it regionally because, you know, let's face it, I know which ones are here and I, <clears throat> and I frequent them, but I'd like to maybe try another one in another town that I'm not yeah. aware of. So yeah. if I we like can interest region. other people, I, yeah, if we can interest the other towns and then we divide it three ways with the cost, you know. Yeah. The chamber is doing something on its on its side as well, telling you to support these these restaurants and that comes through. Uh, so I think that's you know another site that maybe we could use as well. Do they have to be members of the chamber in order to be on that list? Uh, to be on the yes, social Peter. List? Yes. Yes, in order for us to advertise um, a business, they have to be on uh, a member, but okay. we certainly could participate in this, in the regional brochures that you're referring to because, right. you know, that's other towns doing it as well. Okay, so I'll reach out to the, uh, the tourism, uh, I'm sorry, the health district, health district. and see what um, reaction I get and, um, that would be perfect for them to help coordinate with all the other towns because coordinating right. by myself with the other towns could be a disaster um, and a lot of extra work. So um, let's Even see I how think that Ann goes. would love it. Yeah, I think she would. I just, I don't know if they have the staff or the resources. I, I mean, I think it would be a perfect uh, thing for them to take on under their umbrella. They also have uh, a list of all the restaurants because they license and inspect right. them. So um, it, it's it kind of an ideal thing for them to work on. I don't know. They may not have a budget, uh, but I, I don't. I think if we cover, you know, um, as much of the cost as we can, and we can keep those numbers down. Um, so, yeah. Peter, do you want me to reach out to the Newington and the Rocky Hill Chamber? Or is it too early? No, I would. It's certainly just tell them we're thinking about this idea, and if they would, uh, if they think you know they'd like to participate, the more the merrier, and that way we can you know, try and be assured that we cover, um, and they might even want to do other, other than restaurants, there might be other, um, right. other ideas, um, similar to what they did with the tourism district in terms of those, you know, specialty things that, um, you know, so, um, but definitely starting with the restaurants, given what's going on with the, you know, the, the COVID and everything, I think uh, would, would be a great way of, and doing something new to support the business community, particularly restaurants. And I would include Berlin, Deb, uh, because you know they are the fourth town. Right. I think I we know. might have a problem if we don't include them. Would include them. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think we should include them. Yeah, particularly if we're going to work with the health department, it makes sense to include all four towns that are part of the, whatever you call it, a cooperative, a collaboration. A, yeah, the health district. Yeah, the health district. Yeah, and then I could, I could see also another one that's just attractions. It could include the historic sites and the recreational sites. And I mean, you know, the sky's the limit if this, um, and it's always good to work with your neighboring towns. Yeah. Now, you know, a little ax throwing, a little beer drinking, let's see. Right, <laughs> combination of both. So we, we may not know, combo. <laughs> we may not know this answer yet, but um, what would, be, what would be your best guess as a time frame on this? Um, I, I would try and get this done as soon as, you know, and as quickly as possible as, uh, as this continues to go on. So um, yeah, if there's a, if there's a, a, a general support from, you know, the health district and some of the other chambers, I think we would jump right into it. And then by mm -hmm. the next, next meetings, have some numbers so that we, you know, we can make some votes on, you know, what it would cost and how we would share the cost. So um, yeah, there's probably uh, time is uh, 
time is a, is a, is a wasting here. So yeah, yeah. Is, I haven't seen one of these brochures. How, how are people listed? Like, will they give us a little ad from each place to put uh, in? We can send out, we'll send out to the rest of the commission, the brochures that they sent to Peter. Okay. They don't, uh, they just list them. They have some photos of typical, you know, like a bar, a, a, a diner, a diner stool and things like that. I don't think they, because of the, the number of rest, uh, restaurants they had, they had to keep just the listing with the website mm -hmm. and name of them. So you have to keep it short and sweet. Yeah. I was well, going to say, is it even the listing or just the name and address? That's what I can't remember. Yeah, I'll have to look again. I would think yeah. in this day and age, they probably had the website. website. To some yeah, of that websites yeah. would be helpful. Yeah. Right. As long as you have that, you can find out what the, right. the rest of the information is. Right. So, okay. All right. Uh, 2021 town guide and calendar. You were talking about that, Peter. Uh, so we just, um, oh, yes, we'll see Charlie, just, yes, <laughs> yeah, just yesterday we finalized it. So it's going to go to print. Um, it's probably being printed as we speak. So hopefully it'll be available uh, at the end of the week or early next week. Um, uh, we have reached out to the school system and they have agreed uh, to help us distribute them to families. Uh, there are still kids who are in school and so they're going to uh, work to get those once we uh, print them in the uh, school population and then we're going to have to be creative about how we distribute it this year um, because of the usual places like the library and town hall and you know are seeing much fewer uh, faces the library is actually closed until next week i think so um oh, really? we're probably gonna we're probably gonna have to do some actual um deliveries to restaurants and yeah. real estate offices and things like that in order to get them uh, out into the community. Peter, I um, try to get to uh, chamber businesses every week so I can pick some up and distribute them. Be happy to drop off a couple of boxes down at your office and if you can um, yeah, bring them out with you and give them to whoever you can, that would be a big help. And Peter, if you need uh, legs to get them to places that you can't get to, let me know, and I'll be happy to. Sure. Help as well. I'll put out a I'll put out an all points bulletin email to everybody, and if you can sure. um, stop by or I'll deliver them to you, if you can help, that would be great. Will there be a PFD of this? Uh, yes, PDF. You mean? Yeah, PDF. Sorry. Yes, uh, they once um, we haven't received it yet, but um, once. Uh, once um, probably later this week, I'll have it. Okay. Okay. All right, let's move on. Oh, it's 543, so let's keep moving. Uh, certified local government. Uh, so did we talk about this last meeting? Gary, Peter and I sat in with someone from the state to talk about the certified local government. So there is some effort to get this back moving again, but we are still dependent upon the Historic District Commission for the bulk of the information to actually get the certification. So Peter, I don't know if you've had a chance to or had any luck with Kim. I have not yet because I think we are waiting for the um, staff from the uh, State Historic Preservation uh, Office to send us some of the um, documents that had been used by other communities so i don't think we ever she was going to send a packet of information to us and i uh, i checked with gary and he, he didn't get back to me so let me um let me see where that got left off because i think if i talk to kim i prefer to give her examples of the type of work that would be yep. expected of them before i actually you know ask them to start working on something so okay and i think you're right i think it was mary right wasn't that her name from the state Mary Dunn. Yeah. So, okay. Um, and the reason we're pursuing that is they do have a, pot, a small pot of money, but it is a pot of money that we can use um, as grant money. So something that we want to do. Um, Peter, you want to do a real quick update on the CCGPE projects and throw in the Putnam Bridge while you're at it? So we are, um, the engineering department had been down two staff people, they had uh, retired towards the end of the year. They just barely uh, filled those spots. So now that those spots are filled, they will be preparing the design documents for all the individual projects um, over the next few months. 
uh, so that they can go out to bid this year and we can get them hopefully in, under construction before the year is out. The um, Putnam Bridge Trail project, uh, we were informed by the Connecticut DOT that that project is pushed out a year. They were planning on uh, bidding it and starting construction this year, but it uh, sounds like there are uh, other financial commitments that have been made by the DOT and that money, um, uh, the money that was supposed to be earmarked for this may or have been diluted by other projects. So uh, they indicated they're still committed to the project, um, but it's pushed out a year. They're also asking the town to take on the maintenance responsibilities for this whole trail project. Uh, and the town, I wouldn't say uh, is saying no, but we're trying to understand all of what's involved in taking on the responsibilities. The responsibilities would also include snow removal. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine uh, our town guys up on the Putnam Bridge while traffic is flying by and snow is flying, trying to remove the snow. Um, so there may be a scenario where the trail is basically closed in the wintertime because of uh, how challenging it would be for us to maintain. And if you don't get to the snow immediately, it, it's probably not being removed for a per period of time. So there are a couple of hiccups there uh, related uh, to that project, but nevertheless, uh, we're still hopeful that they will put it out to bid next year. Uh, it's a two year construction phase. So it's still a few years away from happening. So um, that's uh, in a nutshell where those two projects are at. Do you know Peter, whether or not the money that's going to Plainville for a bike trail and the money going to Windsor for a bike trail to connect with the waterfront recaptured is state money? Uh, it, it is state money. Uh, there was another uh, solicitation from the CCGP program that we had taken uh, advantage of. So I think both of those projects were funded through that uh, community con connectivity grant project. 500,000 to Windsor. Yes. On that um, bridge project, I don't understand where I mean, you can visibly see the uh, trail on the bridge, but at either end, it's like if you go, down, it's a big drop to go down, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Bump down there. I mean, what? Did, uh, and the, especially on the Glastonbury side, what? Do you expect to, yeah, what there's going to there's a lot of construction. They're going to, you know, they're going to have to fill and uh, create uh, retaining walls, and you know, it's a it's a significant. I mean, I think the total project cost is in the nine to $10 million range. So when you get down there, what are you gonna do? Well, you can connect to the trails of, uh, at Goodwin University down in the yeah. meadows. On, oh, okay, on the there's other time. trails. Yes, and then when you come down on our side, um, we just received some additional funding to fix up uh, Great Meadow Road right. uh, to put in bike lanes and sidewalks to connect to old Weathersfield. So. Uh, mm -hmm. And then, and then you can also obviously go down into the meadows, uh, and we're you know thinking about how we can improve that as well. So um, I, you know, I would in, I, I, in the in the future we'll probably be talking about putting a brochure together for um, Glastonbury, Weathersfield, and Rocky Hill to create a loop um, mm -hmm. with the ferry and with the bridge. And so um, it seems we'll, we'll have some other projects for intermunicipal cooperation. Yeah. If you just have to think about the Charter Oak Bridge uh, that goes from Hartford to East Hartford, and then there's the same kind of path in Windsor that goes over to South Windsor. They don't get a huge amount of use, but they do get used. So, you know, Windsor's in the boat launch parking lot and ends up on historic Main Street. Um, Charter Oak is by the, the little boat landing there. And then you end up on, is that Roberts Road over in East Hartford, which is a really busy road, but mm -hmm. that's where you end up. Yeah, when we had the information session in Glastonbury, there was great uh, enthusiasm and mm -hmm. interest from the folks in Glastonbury for this connection so they can come over to Weathersfield. And, you know, so um, yeah. I think it'll, it'll open up uh, some new possibilities. Yep, I agree. Okay, I'm uh, moving on. So Peter, do we have to talk about budget tonight? Uh, the only thing I wanted you to um, be aware of is that you have only probably spent um, 
25% of your budget uh, uh, and you, now you're halfway through the budget year and, and you just basically decided not to spend your biggest line item. So um, I'm there, doing a restaurant brochure instead. <laughs> yes, there you go. It was, it's going to be a hell of a, it's going to be a hell of a brochure with the money you have left. So, um, so I'm just all color, full color pictures for the whole thing of each restaurant. There you go. Indexed. Yes. You get or lose it. Well, I, uh, I, you, I won't, uh, I won't make that quote, but um, as uh, you can read between the lines that uh, it is going to be another very tough budget year. We're already being told that by, um, by the council. So um, if we have some money now, uh, we should um, be thinking about um, how we're going to spend it uh, on the appropriate things uh, or uh, earmark it for projects that we think um, we need to earmark it for. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to, uh, but at your next meeting, we will start, we will start working on the individual um, budget uh, items. So um, just a, a heads up on that. So I think we need to think about some digital advertising. Um, at the very least, some digital advertising. Um, well, one of the items we skipped over, um, Chris, was the uh, promotional video. Yeah. Uh, we are, I am hearing that you need those little videos um, you know, for the CTM kiosk and for some other, uh, you know, things so that people get a sense. And, you know, I could see a series of similar to the brochure, uh, a series of small promotional videos. Uh, 30 second spots. Yes, of all the assets, yeah. different subject areas. So I think that's maybe something we should. Um, we have been approached by a couple of firms who do that kind of thing. Um, so we maybe need to. Um, take a, uh, spend some more time on that. Uh, our present video, which is very nice, is uh, very dated now yeah. and is time uh, for renewal. We still have it on the website, but uh, I, I think we should um, seriously talk about how we can um, promote with just small little, you know, video videos to put out there on social media uh, or have a series of them. People don't but have the also to watch it. That Go ahead, Kay. No, no, go ahead, Carol. I also suggest that because particularly during this COVID period of time, people have been biking and biking and walking and walking, that whatever you put in that promo, have those kinds of things, people, you know, biking through the meadows, people biking through the cemetery or walking here or walking there. Because I think even though there's that little segment in the old one of Geraldine and myself on the bicycles, I think that's something people are looking for. I mean, you right. see the racks on cars, that people are just driving around with their empty racks. You know that they are out there looking for that opportunity. You couldn't buy a bike for a while during the pandemic. Uh, <laughs> Judy can't get a new bike. No. Yeah. Um, one, one item I've recently heard about is um, we're becoming increasingly popular with bird watchers. Yeah. Oh. Um, Hmm. Particularly down at the cove. The eagles. Eagles, yeah, there's some eagles. Yeah. Down there. Eagles a, and some huge, kind of rare gull. And um, that would be something to throw a picture in of. Right. Mm -hmm. So we can stage some of this. Um, I was going to say, you know, filming one of the Great Meadow Trust walks would be great. Yep. Um, so, Peter, I, if anybody doesn't think it's a good idea, quick pipe up, because otherwise they think maybe we should think about spending our budget on doing the promo videos because then they're here and yep. we have them. Right. And better than I, paper. I support yeah. that for one. Yeah, absolutely. Do we need a I motion to that? spend our entire budget on it? Yep. You want a motion? Well, I don't know what the motion would be since we don't know what the cost would be, right. but we can, I can certainly start. Um, as I said, we have been uh, contacted by uh, mm -hmm. some people who maybe can um, put a proposal or two together and uh, we can talk about it at the next, next meeting. But it's, uh, I think yeah. I hear, I hear there's a general consensus that this yeah. is the way we should go. And I will uh, see what I can do to get some numbers attached to mm -hmm. that. Um, and, um, you know, let those companies um, 
you know, we'll, obviously we'll work with them with our ideas and, right. you know, coordinate with the businesses and that kind of thing. But um, then we'll be what... ready to hit the ground running when this is over <laughs> and everybody's been vaccinated. We'll have them in, in our pocket to pull right. out. Yeah, so if we can Peter, make them does it make generic... sense to ask one or two of these companies to do a short presentation to the commission at the next meeting? We can do that, yep. Maybe they can show us what they've done for other people. Yeah, right. Yes. So would we do a couple of them at the same meeting or one at a time? Uh, maybe we have a maybe we have to have a special meeting. We'll figure it out. We'll just have to yeah. see. It may, it may not be we may not be able to get everybody at the same time or devote enough time to it. So we'll we'll figure um, it out. You know, the other option is that we have a couple of people on the commission set up an ad hoc subcommittee to do the interview and then come back with a recommendation. That's another option. So would they do all the videos? Um, okay, so that that's where the money would add up very quickly, right? Yes, yeah. right. Could they send us a promo that we all could just download and look at at home, so the whole committee looks at it? I, I'm sure if they've they've done this, uh, and I'm sure they have done this before, they can. They would probably give you several to look at that give you an idea of the kind of work product that they yeah. do. This is not I think a, that would be important. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so, Peter, remind me to send you the name of the guy in Plainville who does a lot of work with nonprofit. Okay. Um, the Plainville guy. Okay, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> I can see his building, but, you know, anyways, um, and I can get, I'll find his name. Okay. Um, but he's local, small, yeah. so. Who did our... Uh, who did our video, the one we already have online? Does anyone remember? It was the tourism guy. The guy who was with the Connecticut River Tourism or the Hart Greater Hartford Tourism. Okay. He was their director, and he liked to do that as a hobby on the side. Oh, okay. okay. That's right, right. I remember that. So he did it kind of just because he liked doing that stuff. Sure, sure. Okay. Um. But if we, I mean, I would prefer to do a local business person as opposed to a large company. Sure. So. And I would love to see um, some, you know, drone or aerial video thrown in there as well as, as mm -hmm. part of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Okay. All right. Good. Um, all right. It is um, 5.58. I don't want to keep people too long. So um, quarterly stakeholders meeting, Peter, I don't, I'm thinking we're not going to do anything till March. Okay. I think the last one was in October. Um, so um, yeah, I don't, there's probably not a lot yet to discuss because I um, just, so everybody knows there are very few uh, events, uh, as you can imagine, um, right. locked in. Um, until you know towards the end of the summer and the fall people are feeling comfortable maybe about the fall events but so there's really not a heck of a lot uh, right. going on um and if we have if we have some special meetings to talk about <clears throat> excuse me the map and the video then may not be um necessary to have a stakeholders meeting um just yet right okay is the parade canceled Great. Uh, I don't know that a decision has necessarily been made, but it's probably um, not likely unless things dramatically change. Yeah. The, uh, the, the shopkeepers are hopeful that they can do Porch Fest in August, um, but that's the only, um, the only thing that... Um, what That's day the, the earliest thing. Uh, it's a Saturday. Okay. In, in August. So our calendar this year will have very few right. uh, events in the printed calendar. And then hopefully as they get announced, we'll put them on Great Elm and Historic Weather Shield websites. Okay. It's that time of year for the annual report again, Peter. Great. 
I've, I've been pulling together a lot of the statistics already, so I've got a lot of that uh, pulled together. We're looking for a few more, a few more things, but um, so you and I can talk about that uh, offline. Fine. Okay. Yeah. All right. So in the interest of time, unless you have something really exciting and new to report, I'm just going to run through the list really short. Um, Judy, EDIC. Uh, the only thing really that I wanted to share is that uh, there is a small group that's looking at the Silas Dean Highway and improvements that are needed or um, whatever we can do to improve traffic, uh, slowdowns, uh, beautification, whatever. So there's a small group of working on that through EDIC. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Charlie Ford, Melinda's not on the, the shopkeepers. Any quick updates? Uh, yeah, the, uh, uh, the, the port fetch that was just mentioned, uh, they're, they're going to do that. And of course, the scarecrows, and they're, they're talking about uh, having some kind of a, an event uh, at the same time as the Memorial Day parade. Uh, with uh, uh, decorating, having people decorate bike, oh, bikes uh, all, all along Main Street. So there, <clears throat> there's some other town that's, that's been doing that. And they're, <clears throat> they're <coughs> look, looking into uh, trying to act, uh, put something together for the, uh, in, in conjunction with the, uh, uh, with the parade. Okay. All right. So until we know whether the parade's happening or not, that'll be hard to say. Okay. Amy or Jill. Um, I'll start. We're planning to do, um, kind of following up on some of Randy Fivish's ideas, an outdoor exhibit of um, vintage Valentine's on the landing of the Keeney Center to just have something bright and fun and historical. So look for that next month. Um, and good news, the, the filming that was done in Weathersfield for the History Channel, the food that built America that we weren't allowed to talk about, it's gonna be airing starting um, February 14th. So that'll be on streaming channels but look for history channel you'll be able to see the hd house and keeney utilized in that and we'll be posting a bunch of the photos that we couldn't show earlier on our website um in, over the next couple of weeks i don't know amy if you have anything to add um just that we have some exciting exhibits coming up we have a great exhibit that's up right now and hopefully people will be able to get in to see it at some point weathersfield women um Right now we can do private tours by appointment, but uh, we have just started talking to Judy Keene about an exhibit uh, for the 20th anniversary of 9-11. So we've got some really exciting ideas for that. And that will be um, in the fall, August, September. Uh, and then after that, we have an exhibit that will go up about Maritime Weathersfield. Amy, how many people can be in the private tours? I think, well, it's like one family or um, maybe five. I have to check what the specific yeah. tours somebody, are. Yeah, somebody asked me, so I'll pass that information on. And make an appointment with Christina. Yes. Okay. All right, great. Katie, you want to add anything on W? Yes, I do. Um, Joshua Campbell Torres has come on board and hit the ground running. So we have a lot is coming up, but uh, the first thing that will be coming up is we're doing three lectures in uh, the first three Thursdays of February, all kind of wrapped around George Washington. So we have the curator of Mount Vernon coming to, or going online to talk about um, their slavery program. We're doing, we have a person who was a photographer at Mount Vernon. Uh, so he's gonna talk about that and show pictures. And then uh, one on George Washington's whiskey. I guess they've started up a distillery mm. down there. And so we're gonna have that one as well. Um, one of the reasons I was asking about the Porch Fest is that we are going to be doing a series um, in 
um, July and August, Friday nights, music in the courtyard. So do you know what date the porch fests are talking about? I do. I'll have to, I'll, I'll have to check right. my notes and send it right. to you. Okay, that's fine. Uh, so right is now it, we've got... Is it, August, is it August 28th? Okay. Uh, I, okay. That's a, that's a date that, uh, okay. that sticks in my mind. Yeah, I'll, I'll check. Yeah. All right. I don't see a reason why we can't back to back them, but I'm just just yeah. wondering. Um, and then we're doing um, just he's doing history in the afternoon or something like that. So we're doing snippets like we were kind of talking about. And we're history also putting uh, yeah, history at three. That's it. And then we're also doing um, we're in the process of filming just a snippet of our education programs that we're going to put on YouTube and um, people can watch but also we'll we'll send teachers that way to kind of see just just like a two minute thing on on parts of different programs that's, that's it i'm done okay. peter uh we should invite joshua to the next commission meeting sure i'll add him to the um <clears throat> I, i'll get his email and add him to the distribution list okay i may have his email um could he be the non-retail person that we were looking for well, there has a section for him, right? Yeah, Isn't there's a specific idea? specific section for the executive director there. So, okay. Jesse. Hi, how you doing? Um, I uh, am got uh, at least two or three videos uh, I've been working on. Um, last year, YouTube, I was only able to come out with two uh, videos. I don't know if you wanted me to quickly talk about any statistics now. Um, On web usage or what? Yeah, website, uh, uh, Facebook, all this, the social media. Um, I mean, last year we hit uh, a pretty big high with the website. Um, this year we weren't too far off from that mark. So the website considerably, you know, considering that did pretty well. Um, Instagram uh, is going up, but I wasn't able to take as many pictures or do as many pictures or posts as I was the previous years. And so it didn't show that in the statistics. Um, but if I kept up with it, we it would have been exponentially uh, raised with the statistics and we would have done way better than the previous years. Uh, YouTube with our only two videos being made, uh, we stayed close to around the mark we were last year with statistics. So that says we did pretty good. We did okay with uh, YouTube. And then um, the newsletter did very well. Um, I think people just wanted to know the news and stuff like that. Uh, we gained a lot of um, subscribers and um, people are opening the newsletter a little more. Uh, when we come to Facebook, though, we um, pretty much lost um, about half of our statistics dropped, like just right down the middle in, in half. Um, and Facebook did not do very well at all. Um, so coming up with new ways to bring that back up would be great. Uh, I'll be work, definitely working on that. I think videos, uh, more videos, more pictures. Um, like I was just out now uh, while it was snowing, getting a bunch of great uh, photos of everything and old Weathersfield and stuff. And um, I would like to do a winter in Weathersfield video, um, maybe correspond that with the uh because every year it seems like we are the 15th one of the 15th prettiest towns <laughs> in new england so it would be great to have that you know to show as well um other than that uh i heard um other people talking about um uh several february events um are they kind of in stone written out now like would i be able to go to the website and find them because right um, now i cindy was, um sorry cindy uh, was going to be working on that today but she didn't get to it so i will have her get you all the information as soon as she has it all typed up 
because yeah i um just started working on the newsletter for february and there's not much there's three things and i think two of them are um the art academy okay. and, i'll ask her to send it to you tomorrow yeah, we're finalizing please, ours too. Any, anything in February, please get it get it to me. Uh, yes, um, I would really appreciate that. Okay. okay um, and when are you looking to get the February newsletter out, Jesse? I do it by the first of the month. I can okay. if things need to be held off because nothing. I don't think does anybody have anything around the first going on? Our first one is I think the fourth, whatever that first Thursday is. So, okay. Yeah. If then, then you'd want it. Then yes. Yeah. So okay. I will. Um, I will get her. I'll get her on that for tomorrow. Please. Okay. Thank you so much. Yeah. Right. And Jesse, I'm going to send you something and ask you to post a link to the survey that the advisory, the Weathersfield Advisory Committee, is doing. Community survey. Okay. okay. Um, so I'll get you that information. Great. Okay. All right. Jesse, does it help if any of us take pictures to send them to you to post on Instagram or no? Uh, I think anything would help. Um, I mean, with Instagram, um, photos, uh, what's doing very well and it's showing up on Facebook as well. Um, the pictures I take for Instagram are the most popular ones on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and they're just pictures of the colonial homes, right? Just any, any one of the homes that, you know, each season, different angles, just really getting really good, you know, vivid colors in there. And, uh, they, they really like it. Um, it gets the most likes, gets the most, brings the most people in so far. Um, so yeah. And anything like that, um, general pictures, you know, um, sunsets do okay, uh, things like that. Um, but it's it's the pictures of the houses, the colonial homes that really do well. Okay. Okay. So if you know any that you would like to see or something, let me know. Or if you have pictures of them, sent you could send them to me or something. Or I was thinking actually, um, if the possibility of us doing um, the photo contests a little earlier this year would possibly bring people in and um, get the social media kind of still going uh, a little better. I don't know if that's a possibility. Sure. I mean, yeah, depends on what you mean by a lot earlier. So, well, we usually do it at the end of the year, you know, yeah. Yeah. the last couple months, maybe if we do it a little couple months earlier or something. Can we do a mini one? Yeah, we well, we could. We could do it in the Just middle of the- People can only could... submit one picture, so they can't submit four or five. They can only submit one. Yeah, we um, could do one in the, in the summer if you wanted to. Yeah, short time frame. And there's mm -hmm. always too many fall pictures uh, mm -hmm. because everybody right. takes them at the end of the year when they know right. the calendar's coming out. Yeah. Right. Okay, we can maybe talk about that at another meeting. Yep. Okay. All right. Uh, any other business? Nope. Okay. All right, good. So, um, Kate, you're going to do some research on the crowdfunding for the EV. Right. Charlie, uh, Peter, you're working on the membership. Um, if anybody's interested in working on the promo videos um, and helping Peter out, let him know. We didn't have any volunteers, but I'll throw that back out there. Um, and get your info to Jesse, um, ASAP. <laughs> so he can have it and I think we're good and we'll see everybody in February. Okay. Okay. Bye everyone. All right. Thanks. Good night. good night, everyone. Good night.